Hey Finksters and welcome to today's short tutorial about uh, reverse shells. So I found this um, uh, question a lot. What is a reverse shell uh, on, on, on the internet? So I thought I'd write a small article explaining it basically and um, ex yeah, showing you what exactly it is and why you should care. So um, a reverse shell is often used by hackers to gain access to a target machine. So and the target machine then opens a shell to communicate to the attacking machine rather than the attacking machine communicate to the um, target machine. And uh, so the attacking machine basically receives the connection listening on a given port and is now able to access the target computer. And to accomplish this, um, to accomplish a reverse shell, a hacker must execute a code snippet on the target machine. And reverse shells are also used by security engineers to test and prevent reverse shell attacks. But of course they are also used by hackers. And here is the scenario. Um, I've, I've uh, like created this small diagram to show how it works. Okay, so you have an attacker here. The attacker usually is a, like this is a conventional, con conventional approach by an attacker, like conventional. <laughs> There's nothing conventional about hacking, but uh, I mean, you know what I mean. Um, and he opens up a shell and now he initiates the connection, he or she initiates the connection uh, to the target machine and often this is like ingoing connections are often blocked incoming connections are often blocked and this is necessary because hackers from all over the world constantly try to force their way into your machine so therefore if there's a firewall on your computer or in the or often there's also there are also firewall firewall gateways in the in in the in the network itself then those will usually block these ingoing incoming connections this is easy uh, and um yeah, so, and it's perfectly uh, valid. But um, so so hackers have, have basically, or attackers have can force their way on your machine by getting you to execute a certain code script on your computer. So like, if you run this code snippet on your computer, you basically open up a reverse shell. So you open a shell on your computer, and this shell now tries, as a client, tries to connect to the server created by your attacker. So so you, on your computer basically, you initiate the um, request to, uh, to, uh, to connect yourself to the um, target, to the um, attacker machine. And therefore, as you, as, you as, a, as, as a user who controls your computer, initiate the connection, the firewall is usually fine with it. I mean, you are also initiating connections via your browser, you are, in, you are creating new connections to other machines. So you should, have, you should be able, especially as a programmer, you should be able to initiate these TCP connection. TCP is a, is a network protocol to connect different machines. So you should be able to initiate initiate these connections. If you so you you should you should be able to connect to any um, to any um, server. Otherwise, your computer would be in isolation. So therefore, it's very difficult for machines to protect against these reverse shell attacks. And so the only thing that that must be done by the hacker is first. To open up a, um, a server where where the clients can connect, obviously, and second, to initiate the connection uh, on you to to, init, to run a certain code snippet on the client or on the target's machine, and um, and uh, this is often done by like injecting small one-liner code snippets. So I have uh, one example would be this one. This is such a small code snippet that. Uh, in Python that would create um, so such a reverse shell. So you see we have uh, like we import socket, sub process and OS uh, modules and then we create a new socket. Socket is just this uh, socket is a, is a, is a um, like gateway to a, to a connection from the client to the um, to the attacker. And here we have the IP address, we have the port and we now on our machine we connect to this um, Attacker machine, okay, and uh, basically now here we create a connection. This is done. This is a code snippet that works only on Linux machine. But if you run this on your Linux machine, then you basically you you try to connect to this given IP address and port combination, and now the the attacker has access to your shell. So so because he just waits for your connection coming in, and if you run this code snippet on your computer, then uh, I mean you could be. Uh, you could connect yourself to a, to a server if you don't know what you are doing, and um, and oftentimes these are basically um, these methods are. So if you if you write this as a one-liner, as you know, you can write anything as a one-liner. Usually, it would look like this. So let's go to the first. So it would like it's a long one-liner, 
here you see uh, but uh, it's like it, it it looks very harmless basically it's just a single line of code but it's very malicious it could open up connections to to different uh, to different machines uh, that are that reside anywhere in the world so you should be very careful executing even small one-liners on your computer that you just copy pasted from the internet because they may look harmless they may look like small programs that are not really um, malicious but they but they often are and in fact when <laughs> when I just I just wrote an article about reverse shells and I I wanted to I, <laughs> I this was really funny so in my article I listed I wrote I read, read the article with uh, WordPress which is a blogging software and I listed different commands to open up reverse shells in different operating systems in this article and um, and then I tried to save this article the state of the article because I wanted to create a, uh, to make a coffee for me so I wanted to save the article um, and then if I save the article in my browser it it temporarily downloads um, this file um, that I have just created from the browser it downloads it in a temporary folder by Firefox so Firefox automatically if you save an article it downloads it so that you can you have a local copy on your machine and it can rely on this local copy too even if the connection to the server is, is down like it, you have a local copy on your machine but then just downloading this file with the with these different commands to open a reverse shell um, uh, so my my uh, my fire firewall basically complained and uh, my firewall told me oh uh, this uh, this blog.things.com tries to um, to download malicious code a Trojan code to your machine or so so this is often called a Trojan horse basically yeah so because you you bring some code in, on on the target's machine and this and if you run this code this can be re very malicious so what I did is just remove most of the um, reverse shell connections that were already stored in in the databases of my of the of the firefall companies uh, which uh, which i used so um so you see these firefall companies firewall companies they are not uh without protection so they usually know they can they analyze all everything you download and if you by accident download such a reverse shell attack then you um they will usually tell you and um uh, they will wa warn you that you have that you you, you have the potential you potentially have downloaded a Trojan horse and if you run this program then you, it would connect to, to the to the remote machine but you see anyways it's very dangerous to run code from other people on your machines I think this should be the main takeaway uh, from this article and you should be very careful you should understand the code before you um, before you copy paste and run the code in your in your own shell this is just I mean I know it it sounds obvious but oftentimes it isn't oftentimes we are just going to the internet uh, believing that the code will be uh, will be harmless and we just download the code run the code and but this can be very even if it's it's a python it's a small python script it can be very uh, harmful it can basically um, you you could lose control of your of your machine so you should be very careful about this Okay, thanks for listening to this video. I hope you, you learned something out of it. At least what is a reverse shell and um, why does a reverse shell exist? So what is the like benefit for the attacker? Also, what, what is the how can you can protect against reverse shell attacks? Have a have a firewall um, on your computer installed, um, which is which oftentimes will actually be able to analyze reverse shell attacks, uh, but sometimes it it won't. Uh, so therefore, the third way is to just not execute code from other people which you download from the web um, okay that's it thanks for listening to this video and see you in the next video bye